Hey guys, Loda Tecker with another video today. Uh, I got the Master Liquid MO240 um, L V2 RGB from Cooler Master. It's an AAO uh, that I want to add to my PC. As you can see, this is my config right here. I got an RTX 2070 Super, a Ryzen 3600. Up here, fans, which are um, the cheap ones from Amazon where you just connect to the SATA controller, and uh, two gigs of um, G Skill uh, 3600 uh, Rip Joss RAM. So, yeah, so what I wanted to do is, you know, get better performance. You know, the stock cooler is good for AMD, but I wanted a little bit more performance. And this one is really good at a budget, around $70. You get two RGB fans with it, which is pretty neat because I believe these fans alone go for $18 each and uh, three packets of $40. So let's open up, let's see what's inside. All right, all right. So we got the cooler right here. Pretty nice radiator, seems thick and solid. That's the cap right here. Copper plate, pretty good. Let's take that out. We got the, um, they call these the Sickle Flow 120. These have up to 1800 RPM and have hydraulic bearings, I believe. Same one, it's a two pack. We got the manual right here. Let's take off these. We got, uh, I believe, this should be all the brackets and stuff. Thermal paste should be inside as well. Right, all right, let's get on to the items. All right, guys, so once you have taken out everything, make sure you dump all the items from the bag. There's going to be a couple of Ziplocs. This is the one you're going to need for putting on the fans to the radiator. And let's just check out what else they got. So we got a couple of these um, RGB connectors, extenders, Moldex connections. We got, yeah, we got this extender for the RGB header. We got uh, screws for the Intel LGA sockets. And also the thermal paste you can use for either system. This is the back plate we're going to be using. We also got the controller for the RGB if your motherboard doesn't have a header. A couple of stands offs. Then we also got the caps here. It's pretty, pretty cool because with RGB, you know, you have those loose cables. And just keep it in place. All right. So let's find out the positioning of our um, radiator. So depending on what you want, uh, for my case, I only have one fan header on the top. This is the NZXT H510. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it like this. So since I'm placing it like that, I'm just going to screw in the fans with the wires facing towards the back. So just grab this right here, grab one of these fans, and make sure the wires in the back line it up. All right, that's lined up. Grab one of these screws. Yeah, so these are like kind of like thumb screws, so you just start screwing it in. All right, so once we do that, I'm just going to grab my screwdriver and make sure everything's tightened. All right, we're done with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the cover from the case. And I'm going to show you how to do the next step. All right, guys, so I finally took off the front mounting uh, plate for the radiator. So what I'm going to do is just line it up, put in the eight screws. And if you have a top, if you're doing top mounting, all you got to do is just screw it onto the holes on the top. But again, it depends on your case. All right, I finally screwed everything together. So all I'm gonna do is just attach this to the front panel. Go in there. All right, perfect. Be careful, screw everything in. Make sure everything's tight and snug because you don't want to have problems later with like fan vibrations or anything like that. So just get that sorted out. All right guys, so I got this attached up tightly and secure just make sure nothing moves around All right so that's good so what we're going to do is uh, remove the cpu uh, fan next and now remove the cpu fan header then pull this out and i'll set this aside right here. and the next step would be to grab one of these alcohol pads right and move that aside all you got to do is just give it a nice rub down all right so the next step is you go into the intel lga bag and you grab the thermal compound you just unscrew the black cap and here it depends on what method you want to use i usually just go for the middle drop put that right there a couple right here and that should be good enough and once you do that the next step would be you'd have to apply the brackets that came in your motherboard box 
So you got to apply the original AMD brackets and they usually go on like this. So you just got to screw it in. So I decided to add a little bit more of thermal paste just to make sure everything's okay. And also, um, once you're adding the brackets in, make sure the hooking mechanism is facing on the other end and not towards the CPU. So the next step would be, you're gonna grab one of these brackets right here. This bag right here has the AMD bracket. All right, once you have gotten the AMD brackets, make sure to dump the bag that has the back plate for the Intel based system. And what you're gonna be needing are the four screws that come with it. So you're gonna take one of the, both of these and what you're going to do is, um, you see this right here, right? The, uh, like the block, what you're going to do is make sure this part, the high rising part faces up. And what you're going to do is simply, uh, just put it right here and you take one of those screws and you start screwing it in and do it for both sides. All right, guys, as you can see, I screwed on both ends and the brackets are set to go. So what we're going to do next is remove this plastic covering right here. I've seen Amazon reviews where people have made the mistake of putting it in with the plastic. And honestly, that's a big mistake. So we're just going to go in there, make sure everything's lined up. You just start screwing in the side. All right, guys, so I finally managed to put on the CPU block. Uh, it's kind of hard, but all you have to do is just line up the side nibs right here. And you have to do it on that side, making sure uh, that you're holding it down the entire time, given the pipes are quite rigid. And the next step are, is, since we have our three components to this, we have two fans and we also have the pump. You got to grab the included uh, cable splitter they had. All right, this is the RGB splitter. So it takes your one RGB connection and splits it into three. All right, guys, since my motherboard is a B450M, it doesn't have a CPU option header. So what I did here was I took the three pin connection from the pump and plugged it into the CPU fan header. Since the pump's gonna run at 100% all the times anyways, that's perfectly fine as the fourth one is for PWM. So since in my scenario, what I have to do is I have to take the splitter for the fans on the radiator and plug it into the system fan header. However, uh, if your motherboard does have a CPU fan header and an option header, you plug it into the CPU section. So I'm gonna go in here, plug this in right here. All right, guys, as you can see, I plugged in the header right there. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna grab the RGB header right here and I'm gonna plug it in to where it says um, 12VGRB. So that's where it goes in and make sure the arrow's facing up and you just put it in there. Everything, including the RGB splitter, the fan splitter, and the pump wire. Uh, you should just manage the cables up a little bit and start connecting it. So I'll just flip over the case and fix these wires up a little bit. All right, guys, as you can see, I did a little bit of cable management. I put the CPU fan header cables towards the back and the RGB cables towards the back as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to attach up the fans. As you see the fan connector here, you're going to grab one of this. This is the last one that I have remaining. Plug it in. And once I do that, you're going to focus on the RGB headers. So the RGB headers are right here on the bottom. All right, so you're going to grab all the ends of the RGBs from the CPU pump to all the two other fans. And what you're going to do is you're just going to attach it up to the splitter right here. All right, once we have hooked everything up, the RGB wires and everything, make sure to use the clips. As you can see, the clips prevent the RGB wires from coming off. And this is really good as even high-end AIOs don't even include this. And this allows you to like, you know, be sure that it never comes off. And it's quite easy to put on. All you gotta do is just slip it over and just click it in with both of the wires. All right, so finally we're done. We got everything hooked up and everything. Let me just give you a look around of how it looks now. And right after this, I'm gonna clean everything up, cable manage it and show you how it looks once it turns on. As you can see, I got everything set up. I have the tubing set up and everything. Get the fans connected. And once you do everything like that, what you have to do is download the RGB software for your motherboard. In my case, I have Gigabyte, so I have to download RGB Fusion 2.0. Once I do that, I'll just launch the application. And once I do it, I should be opened with a variety of options. So here you go. I have a couple of options. I can literally do any color I want. I could do green. I could do sky blue. Plenty of options right here. All right, so, and another thing, um, before, after you start it up, just feel the tubes with your own hands before closing up the case and see if it's vibrating. If it's vibrating, that means the tubes are working. And if you do hear a water noise, um, the manual says, give it around 15 minutes and then it should be fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what I could fix in my next videos. Unfortunately, because of the coronavirus crisis, I couldn't um, borrow a camera from my school, so I shot this on my phone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay safe.